let's delve into our translation function. So I'm going to show you each of the one, two, three, four, four, five, six rules. I'm going to explain each rule. I will give you examples of each rule. And I'm going to separate this in a few videos. So first, let's look at field lookup. So whenever you, what you will see in the, in the PDF is going to be something like this. So the notation of J, and then we use this weird brackets. That's just to say J is the translation function where we're translating JavaScript into simple JS. Okay, so on the left hand side, you're going to have, so we are defining a function by branches as we saw before. So each branch is doing a pattern matching on the structure of the input, which is going to be the AST term or AST JavaScript expression. So what is the JavaScript expression? The first one is field lookup, where we have two identifiers. Um, and what we need to do whenever we, if the thing is, um, is a field lookup, what we need to do, we need to generate the following code. So pretty simple. We need to place the identifier for the object inside of the ref. And then the result of that, we're going to do a get field. Um, we're going to convert the identifier to a string. So that's the last thing, perhaps a bit more confusing. So the input is going to be two, two um, symbols. Sorry. Uh, do we even have this? So you're going to look up, you should look up the AST in the code. I actually showed you a, a previous video with, with just the syntax. Now you should map the syntax that is in the slides to the homework 8 util. So one thing you will note is that this and X, for example, this is an example, right? And this is the just the, the, the specification of this case, right? So let's look at this example. Left hand side, we have the variable this and X is going to be a variable as well. X. So inside a variable, you have symbols. And what do you need to do? You need to, here you have a deref of a symbol. Sorry. Um, now you have another a variable of JavaScript. So you need to convert from the source JavaScript to the target um, AST. Then you have to place it inside a deref. And the result of that has to be inside a get field. And you also have to convert x, that is a variable, into a string in lambda.js. Okay. Um, the next thing we are going to look at is field update. So field update, we have to do quite a few things. There is so certain subtleties that need to be explained and addressed. So in the simple JS, we have this code. And we're basically assigning x to this.x. The code to generate is whenever, and this is the formal notation, whenever we're assigning an expression to a field, what do we have to do? First thing we need to do is we need to evaluate the expression. And we evaluate it with, with a, a let. So we have to use the lambda js j colon let. And we, what variable are we going to use? Let's use variable data for now. And then the value that we're assigning is going to be the translation of E. And then in the body, it's going to be this whole thing. Okay. So we can see that this line maps to this translated code. Next thing we want to do is the body of the let is these two things. So our, what are these two things? It's going to be a, a begin, right? You have a begin here and you have an assignment and then reading a value. So on the, the first line, we are, this is assignment. <clears throat> Sorry. So therefore we use set exclamation mark. X is whatever variable was given. So in this case, it's going to be this. So that's what we have here, this. And then what we have, we have the ref obj, which is this. And then we are, again, converting whatever field. So here the field was y, and we have to convert. Here the field is x, so we have to convert it to a string. And then we have to do construct an update field, where the thing being updated is the data. Okay. 
and then we return data. Okay, as we see here, we return data. Okay, so notice that there's a begin here because there's the semicolon, and then the first thing of begin is this thing, and the second thing of begin is this thing. Okay, so now let me explain what we're doing here intuitively. So whenever you see in JavaScript x dot y assigning it to some, you assign some expression to x dot y, what we need to do is we need to evaluate the expression, right? Technically, we should have evaluated the left-hand side first, but because we are fixing it just to, to references, it's not a big deal if we do it after. So then what we do, we dereference x because x is a reference to an object. And then that if we dereference it, we get the actual object from the heap. And then we have to look up the field y. We do that. That returns an immutable object. And then what we do, we do the update of the already evaluated value. So that's what we have here. And now we need to update, store again, the new object. So that's what we're doing. X again is the reference. So it's the handle. And we update the new object with this line. And then what we need to do in JavaScript, if you do an assignment, it returns the value of E. So that's why we return data. Data represents the, va the evaluation of E. Okay. <clears throat> Next thing I wanted to talk about is that we have to be careful whenever we're generating code, and this also affects macros, is the problem of free variables and bound variables. And this we talked about in previous lesson. So the problem here is that we're, what is the name that we're gonna assign here? Well, according to the slides is data, right? So if I just write data, it should be fine. Well, kind of. What if your code has data in it? Now, what will happen is look at this example where we have an object called data.x but in my compiler i actually hard coded the variable data from for some internal manipulation but now what's going going to happen is according to the the translation code this input we generate this output right so now what is the problem well now the problem is i assigned the value to data so because of the way the order of this let right the let of the argument so that's the first thing right we're evaluating the argument being assigned but now because we because it's called data and data is in the um, in the object name now we redefine what data means right because the internal variable for the compiler is clashing with the user variable Right? So now what we, how do we fix this? Right? Because now data be, represents 10 and I'm s assigning something to, I'm expecting to assign a reference, but now I'm using a number 10. Because this data, what I mean is the user variable data. But what I actually am referring to now is the compiler's variable data. So we have to be careful. How do we fix this? So the way we fix this is um, in your homework util 8, there is uh, a lambda JS. There is a, a, a specific version of let that actually generates a, rent, uh, a special variable that is not known beforehand. So if you use Basically, you need to use not generate hard-coded names, but instead have a smarter way to generate variables that are internal to the compiler so that they never clash with the user variables. And that is what that code does. I will show you an example of that code later. Okay, but this is a very important problem. And there might be some tests for the, the last few points that capture this. Okay, so... Now that we talked about the problem, what is the problem that occurs when generating code? Try to, try to explain it in your own words what we, what I just explained to you. <clears throat>